Welcome to Warblog. Um, <clears throat> today I'm just going to have a quick look at this Afghan Yuan US withdrawal. The reason I'm doing this video is essentially because I want to talk about information dominance. And it's, it's to be quite honest, it's sort of different really because I'm not actually going to play the game. I haven't even finished this game. I just feel like saying something about the Afghan situation that sort of I've been following it in you know in, in part but at the same time I can't commit the time to sort of do the fall of all 34 things so I'm not going to do any more because we've assumed you know that they're not fighting and the situation is now sort of like you know complete in the sense that the Taliban now have you know control of Kabul etc and the reason for the video is really just to talk about one thing and that's information dominance and I've got to use this scenario which I haven't finished and I'm not going to finish immediately but it's based on the um, the other one that I did for the 2018 elections um, and I haven't finished it so I'm trying to put in all the regional capitals but I have only got a small way through the list um, and then I'll go and change all these units and you, you know it's just this is not complete but you know it's sort of just to represent I'm going to change a lot of the geography as well so because it's all hilly I'm going to replace a lot of this with deserts um, etc etc but I was looking at I get these emails um, Yeah, I get I get this these emails. It's just something I signed up for, and from the CSIS missile defence, which is strange. I get these emails from CSIS missile defence, and they sort of it always seems a bit odd because I'm not a military contractor or anything. And, um, and usually I don't read them because they come in through quite quickly. And it's the title is Rethinking Homeland Defence Global Integration Domain Awareness Information Dominance and Decision Superiority, and I thought oh. What have they got to say in this sort of like this particular moment? Because I consider this to be quite sort of, you know, quite a, a major event and unprecedented in many ways. And what picked my interest was information dominance. Now, this meeting is going to happen tomorrow at um, Tuesday, 17th of August 2021 at between 2 and 3.15, probably some American time, I don't know. I'm not going to do it. It's sort of a webinar and... I thought, oh, I'll, 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 I'll look into that. And then I thought, nah, <laughs> you, you know, um, but I, well, the reason I wanted to look into it, because I wanted, it's interesting in some of these terms. I looked up information dominance, just Google it. And um, you get this information dominance this PDF. So I'll have a look at this. And this is from 1997. And it's talking about this is the conclusions information dominance I thought this is interesting what would they mean by all this it says information dominance may be defined as superiority in generation manipulation and use of information sufficient to afford its possessors military dominance and I sort of thought well that sort of has a lot of parallels and that intrigued me because it has sort of the manipulation of information and you know this is all very key to things that I do because I'm fairly web based and it's full of you know information and I started to read through um, I mean we actually got to this second line it has three sources uh, command and control that permits everyone to know where they and their cohorts are in the battle space and enables them to execute operations when and as quickly as necessary Intelligence that ranges from knowing the enemy's dispositions to knowing the location of enemy assets in real time with sufficient precision for a one-shot kill. Information warfare that confounds enemy information systems at various points, sensors, communications, processing and command, while protecting one's own. So I haven't read any further. I just thought, wow, this is sort of, you know, really interesting in the context of what's happened in Afghanistan because I think the news portrays it as um, a subtle mix between some half-hearted defences of certain regions to full-out capitulation and surrenders of regional capitals. Uh, one video that took me 
sort of struck my interest in particular was of a small sort of convoy of Afghan troops fleeing the city in armoured vehicles with the people who obviously the context was quite interesting because the people were quite they were quite and I would say they were quite young but they looked quite small puny probably not the sort of people that would want to fight they were certainly weren't beefed up soldiers who have been working out every day because they've been paid to and, and you know get to wear body armor and carry guns these are just sort of you know people that are probably you know just typical afghan men young men and they were throwing stones at these uh, as these afghan soldiers as, as they fled i believe you know in many instances towards the nearest border with you know iran or pakistan or kazakhstan or something like that but what got me and the reason i'm doing this video and it's just really an observation i don't really have any points or anything but i just want to sort of think about and i'm just sitting here and i think well I'll, I'll do a video on that but i probably won't get around to doing it so i'm just just sort of like cutting to the chase and just doing this video quickly on the topic of information dominance and you sort of think well surely in 20 years uh, the the um the united states and the united nations and the nato powers that were in um afghanistan training up the um the, the afghan forces 300,000 troops would have been focusing on information dominance as as a, in a predominant fashion you know it would have been key they would have had massive intelligence and information systems in place that would allow them essentially to do exactly what it says on the tin to uh you know to permit everyone know where everyone is in the battle space and uh, to enable them to execute operations when and as quickly as necessary so they would have known exactly who was where and what was happening and who was approaching these places and they would have had you know systems in place to you know to carry out preemptive strikes um and i think one other thing that I, I read on a video i think it's from the csis as well um there was some sort of commander and i think this has gone around on twitter and certain other sort of you know vi viral sort of bodies um he was talking about um he's, he's talking about the influence of pakistan he said this is not just the influence of pakistan you know the influence of pakistan might have had say certain efforts but it certainly would not be behind you know thousands of troops routing from the cities and running away and his conclusion was this is something else and that struck me i thought well, this is something else what actually is it i mean what, what has actually sort of happened and you've got to sort of think well they had information dominance they must have had all this sort of information stuff here and, and i think that to some extent the whole thing is so confounding from a militaristic kinetic perspective that it just doesn't make any sense and you know i'm not trying to sort of come to conclusions or make any sort of accusations it just seems to me that when you think about it this is an extraordinary event and it's one of the first ones that sort of really struck me as being something hmm <laughs> i quite fancy talking about this um not necessarily directly in in that sense but uh, i've got a forum on my site and no one ever uses that and i've twittered a few of these things and no one really sort of starts saying hey uh, that's interesting and you know no one's talking to me about what's happening and i'm not trying to bemoan that or anything but i don't actually feel like expressing some sort of thought you know on that and that's what i'm doing here just just briefly i'm not gonna sort of make it any longer because there's there's probably millions of observations and thoughts that i could have but this came through today on information dominance and i was just thinking well you, you, you know when you start to think about you, you know information warfare that confounds enemy for information systems at various points i mean they must have had you know this concept of information dominance it is it, designed to give you the ability to you know to carry out precision one-shot kills and it just seems to me that the way they're presenting this whole situation is that they were just totally surprised and they couldn't see them coming from a mile away and and you know they've got access to probably u.s satellite systems you know advanced 
surveillance systems, communication systems, information systems. Um, you know, they would have probably sort of, you know, been able to identify significant convoys. They'd probably been able to identify and track, you know, the presence and locations of, of certain warlords. And, and it all just sums up to something else has happened. And, and I don't even want to actually, I'm not even going to guess. I've had some thoughts, but it's not, you know, it's not really something that I want to, I don't want to start getting bogged down with being controversial or trying to say one thing or another. I just think that it's a very peculiar course of history that, that we've just experienced. Um, you, you know, and I think a lot of people send their surprise. But I think when you look at information dominance and you consider it, and then you consider what some that, that guy from CSIS said in a video about Pakistan, he said this is something else. You know, I think this is something else. And when you consider information dominance and the, the information network and, you, you know, I mean, I think the, the Afghans had 300,000 soldiers on paper and the Taliban had like 75,000, um, you know, and, and to, to have all these regional centers route and, and be overrun when you know, th throughout time, the U.S. with their application of systems has been able to sort of maintain a, a balance, at least a, a control. You know, it's it's got to be sort of there's got to be more to what we've just gone through than we know either at the moment that we might or, or that we might ever not know, or we, that we there might be more than we will ever know, and quite possibly in ten years' time, other information will come out to sort of you know give us other perspectives on, on what's happened but um i think i think when you sort of look at it and you sort of think about you know exactly what what has, what has happened it, it's it's you know it's it's historic <laughs> and unprecedented um and you know i don't i don't really have anything more to say i've just been thinking about information dominance and i don't want to keep repeating that term um but yeah, I mean, so if you've got any thoughts, really, I mean, I've never said this before and I'm not really sort of fish, fishing too much, but I'm going to leave the video at that because I don't want to sort of, sort of, you know, continue focusing on, on that. But this is what I'm thinking about. I'm just thinking here and sort of thinking, well, gosh, you know, I mean, what do all these, what do all these things mean? I mean, surely they should have sort of, you know, they should have known where everyone was and, you know, with their satellite systems, they should have been able to sort of, you know, with their attack helicopters, carry out precision one-shot kills, you know, um, they should be able to confound enemy information systems, you know, while sort of pretending that maybe regional capitals have fallen to attract, you know, attention in one direction and then to counter-attack, you know, you know, something, something just doesn't sound right here when you start to consider sort of the implication of this, because this is the crux of you know of, of of war information and the understanding of who's where um and i think the the, the media is maybe portraying the fact that they were just sort of looking over the, you know the only time that the afghans knew when the taliban were arriving was when they looked over the parapets of their fortified cities and saw motorbikes arriving you, you know that's not the case at all it, it, it can't be you know we're talking about warfare that happens across over the horizon <laughs> so um as i'm not reading more of this but you know if you do have any thoughts on that then put it in the comments not that i really expect anyone to but uh, i've never really done a video like this before where i've just sort of expressed some thoughts and opinions but um that's that anyway so um yeah i mean obviously really peculiar uh bend in history and that's all there is to it really life goes on so i'll um i'll speak to you later Cheerio.